Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Todd's Backyard Barbecue. Today we're going to be making Todd's delicious brisket. Uh, some people are a little intimidated by brisket. It's actually pretty easy, just a few simple things to remember. And it starts with getting a good, nice brisket. So you want to get a brisket flat, don't get a whole brisket. This is what's known as a flat. They tend to be five to seven pounds. This one's just about seven pounds. And you want to make sure it has a really nice layer of fat on top. That's going to be key. After that, all you really need is your favorite barbecue rub. I use this Southwest Spice Blend by Blend It Up. I think it's one of the best, but you can use whichever one you like the best and just generously cover the brisket on all sides with the rub. And go ahead and rub it in. Next thing you're going to need is a, an aluminum foil tray. A lot of people cook them without the trays. I find that as you cook it nice low and slow on the grill while you're smoking it, that it actually allows the juice to stay with the brisket and get sucked back up when you pull it off. So it's as simple as that. You want to put it fat side up in your aluminum tray and we're ready to head out and start up the barbecue. All right, I'm out here at the Hasty Bake. I've got uh, my charcoal in the middle and it's just getting started. All right, we're out here at the Hasty Bake getting uh, things started. I've got the coals warming up. I've got a nice pile in the middle. I like to use all natural lump charcoal. Uh, b and is some of the best around if you can find oak. I think that's preferred. I've got a few pieces of mesquite that my uncle in Tucson uh, harvested for me and sent my way. A lot of people soak their wood chips. I actually think that provides too much smoke and you can really over smoke the brisket. Uh, so we're just gonna throw one of these in every hour, hour and a half and give it that nice mesquite flavor. Another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a heat deflector if you have a direct grill like this. Pace bait comes with one and then you're gonna need a uh, pan with water in it to help moderate the temperature and keep the chamber humidified. Another nifty thing I've got is uh, this device called a tap -a You can connect up to four probes. I've got two probes on it right now. One's going to go into the brisket and the other one is in the chamber. And you can set the temperatures and then monitor the brisket uh, and the chamber in real time uh, anywhere, even if you're away from home, so you can make sure that you're not getting the chamber too hot. And with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the grate on and put the brisket on. We've got everything just set up just right. Bill's coming up this temperature. You can see I've got the heat deflector on top of the coals and then the pan with water on top of that. And I'm simply just gonna throw the brisket on top of the grate here. I'm gonna take one chunk of that mesquite that I talked about and throw it down in the coals. Last thing I'm gonna do is insert the probe into the brisket, right in the thickest part. I get a good temperature reading on that. It's about 10 a.m. in the morning right now. Uh, you can see I've got the chamber temperature is just around 200. We wanna keep it between 225 and 300. I like it on the warmer side, somewhere around 250, 275. And uh, current temperature in the meat is around 40 degrees. So this is gonna cook for about 10 hours, nine or 10 hours, and we'll check back in later. So we just put the brisket in. It's about 10 in the morning. Uh, the brisket temperature right now is 51 degrees. If you can see this on the top of queue. The chamber temperature is 266 and we're starting to get a really nice mesquite smoke. I'm going to let this go ahead and sit in there for maybe an hour and a half, almost two hours, and then I'll refresh the coals and check back in. Well, the brisket's been in about three and a half, maybe almost four hours. It's about 160 degrees in the center and the uh, smoker's about 250. I've added uh, mesquite and charcoal a couple times 
maybe every hour, hour and a half. As you can see here, the brisket is looking really amazing. Plenty of juices collecting in the bottom. What you can do is you can just spoon those up and just baste it over the brisket. Keep it nice and moist. There is to it. I'll check it another hour, hour and a half. All right, the brisket's looking really good. It's been on about 10 hours. We're going to pull it off, let it rest in the kitchen a little bit, and then slice it up. So we uh, brought the brisket in. It was on the grill about 10 hours. We've let it rest, soaks that juice back up. Now we're just going to transfer it to a uh, cutting board. Oh, just like that. Looks fabulous. This is a total luxury item to have an uh, electric knife. You can slice the brisket on your own, uh, just with a, a handheld knife. But the meat is so tender that if you if you have the ability to get an electric knife, it's gonna slice like magic. Let me show you. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn the brisket this way. We're gonna go ahead and cut across the grain. Taser. So good. That's Todd's delicious brisket right there.